we all know that the room temperature you are having has a huge impact on how much you can cool down your PC, but how much of an impact does it really have? Let's say we use this Noxia NHD15 and we are sitting in a room that has 20 degrees. Now let's say the CPU is running at 80 degrees C. Okay, that's 20 room, 80 CPU. But if the room now is 25 degrees C hot, does that automatically mean that the CPU will be sitting at 85? Is it really a one-to-one -one ratio? Or will that factor become bigger once the temperature gets higher. Now of course there's a limit to how far I can test this. I don't want to die for a little experiment but for today I wanted to find out how much of an impact will it have if I heat up this room here by let's say 10 degrees C. For this we are going to use the Nokia NHD15 and the new CPU cooler benchmark machine and a bunch of heating elements. Okay, we are all set. We have the NHD15 2 fan sitting on top of the 13900K and it has the 120 mode in. And right now the CPU is sitting at roughly 59 degrees C. It is fluctuating a bit, but 59 and we are sitting at a room temperature of 23.7 degrees C. And that means the CPU is sitting at 35.3 degrees C above ambient, uh, which is a number. Okay, that's something to work with. But if I now heat up the room by 10 degrees C, does that mean that we will be looking at 45 degrees C above ambient? I think the higher you go, the bigger the gap will become, but let's see. I will be displaying the temperature of the room, the CPU and the above ambient right here on the screen. And now I guess we just got to wait and heat up the room. How do I heat up the room quicker? This seems like a great idea. Oh wow, I can go up to 37 degrees C. That's hard. Oh, it's really hard. It's really hard. Okay, what else can I turn on? Yeah, let's... let's I, I will turn on the, the octopus. That one, that creates heat. Okay. It, it is getting pretty hot in here. The octopus is running, the, the Dyson, oh my god, is this hot on my neck. The Dyson is running, this one is running, everything is running, and it's getting hot in here. Oh my, oh my god. Uh, what else can I do? Uh, hmm. I wanted to achieve, like, a room temperature of... 35? I guess this will take a bit longer than I expected. Yeah, let, let's do something useful with our time. Oh my god, is it hot in here. Okay, so some time has passed and the CPU is now sitting at a very cozy 72 degrees C. Wow, that's, that's quite the step up from where we began. And the room temperature is now sitting at 34 degrees C, 34.1. I managed to pull it off, which means that we are sitting at 37.9 degrees C above ambient as of right now in this second because I heated up the room a bit more than 10 degrees C and the difference has now become 2.6 degrees so 
Upping up the room temperature by 10 degrees C changed the above ambient temperature, what the cooler can push, by 2.6. That's... that's 20%. That's more than I thought. Wow, 20% 20, 20 is a lot. However, as of now, the room is still heating up. So... Let's just give it another 15 minutes and see what happens. Okay, so last readout now, all the fans were stopped like 5-10 minutes ago. We have only one room fan in the very back, uh, which is still spinning to distribute the hot air across the whole room, like, like move it around. But the Dyson in the back is uh, shut off now and it needs to be shut off because he is blasting 37 degree hot air from time to time into the CPU cooler. So it's heating up the chip even more. And once I turned it off, the temperature just dropped by like 2 degrees C instantly. So now we have the most accurate readout. The room temperature right now is 34.9 degrees C right here. So it's freakishly hot, I'm already sweating, it's crazy, but the CPU is sitting at 69, 68, it's fluctuating. The average over the last three minutes is 68.63. So now we will be getting the most accurate readout, just as we had in the very beginning. So 68.63 minus the 34.9, and we are sitting at 33.73 degrees C above ambient on the chip, which compared to the original 35.2, uh, 35.3 minus 35.3, which means that we are now sitting at minus 1.5 degrees C. I did not expect that. So the harder the room becomes, the more efficient the Nokia NHD15 was able to get the heat out. Wow, that, that's... Okay, I, we learned something today. I, I was convinced it would be the other way around. Like, I was convinced the, the harder it becomes, the less effective it becomes, the, the bigger the gap in into a, a, a negative value, so a so harder CPU it will grow, but no, the it became better. 1.5 degrees C better, which which is a lot, mind you, on, on 60 68.52 average, one one and a half degrees C, that's that's a number, that's the difference between between a a D a, a NHD15 and a U12A, so well, what I initially believed was the cooler would perform worse. But actually, it didn't. It performed around 10% better, which is also a problem. 10% in any direction is a problem if you are trying to like standardize um, cooler benchmarks. So, uh, very, very interesting. The NHD15 managed to distribute or to take away one and a half degrees C more than it was with a room temperature of 23 degrees C. So that's very, very, very interesting. I did not think it would perform in that way, but this is where we are. But I need to keep that in mind for future, for the future, because right now I'm trying to keep the room temperature around 25 degrees C, like flat if I'm, I'm benchmarking coolers. Uh, and I didn't choose like 25 because I like the number, but because I can't cool the room down more. It's just I don't have an AC, so that's like the number that I can keep up to some degree. And if the room becomes harder, I just stop. And I wait away and I start benchmarking the next cooler the next day. Uh, that's a problem for me, but now I know why I do it. Because if I would not stop it, I would create a difference of up to one and a half degrees C if I just never stop benchmarking. So that's very, very interesting. And I need to keep that in mind for the future. I I'm just shocked that the cooler had a positive evolution instead of a negative one but that's very very interesting so that's what we learned today heating up the room by more than 10 degrees created a up to 10 15 percent difference in the above ambient result that comes out which is a lot 10 percent 15 percent is a, a big difference which needs to be kept in mind uh, if someone is benchmarking coolers. Very, very interesting. But for today, this was it. I learned a lot and I really need to, to cool down this room now because it's so hot. I'm, 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 I'm just 
wet. It's, it's disgusting. So I'll open all the windows and maybe I'll go for a walk. I, I can't be in here anymore. But okay, thank you for watching. I hope you found this as interesting as I did. And if you want to continue watching, have a look at the video where I screw up this machine because this is a CPU cooler benchmark machine and I did a couple of mistakes when first setting it up. But have a look at that video. And yeah, thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.